Hello there, I'm Richard from Tyne Valley Aquatics and the Pond Guru channel on YouTube and today I'm going to talk about the nitrogen cycle and also have a few notes on filtration in general. Now whilst it looks quite peaceful in this tank there's actually all sorts going on in there and it's all to do with this filter. The nitrogen cycle is basically the production of ammonia by fish and uneaten food the conversion of that ammonia into nitrite and then the conversion of nitrite into nitrate. Ammonia, nitrite, nitrate. This is a slightly larger version of the filter that was in that tank there and it's basically a pump which sucks water through foams and spits it out back into the tank. Now those foams support bacteria and it's the bacteria that eats the ammonia and nitrite and also nitrate to a very small extent in these filters. No matter what sort of tank or pond you have, you do need the ammonia and nitrite to be processed. Ammonia is very toxic for fish, nitrite is also very toxic as well, although less than ammonia. Now one of the major causes of death of fish and other organisms in tanks and also in ponds is what we call new tank syndrome or if it's a pond, new pond syndrome. It's basically where you take a stock of fish, put them into a relatively new body of water, when the filter isn't set up enough with bacteria, the fish produce waste that the bacteria can't cope with, then the pollution levels build up in that body of water, the fish really suffer and then die. Now you might think that because in really big ponds, rivers, lakes etc, you don't have any sort of filtration as such, why should you need it indoors? Well, in a river, even a river that's absolutely full of fish, you've got so much more water than fish. The fish are a really small part of it and you've got a constant flow of water taking the fish's waste away. In an enclosed environment, like a tank or a pond, you've got a lot of fish in a small body of water no flow through of fresh water to keep that waste flushed out so you need a filter whether it's in the tank or out of the tank an external to take that fish's waste and process it into less harmful things now the difference between cold water i.e. ponds or an unheated tank and warm water which would be classed as tropical conditions is quite noticeable when you take bacteria into account. Bacteria colonizes the media or the foams in your filter a hell of a lot quicker when the water is warmer. So when you're setting a pond up or a cold water tank allow a little bit longer before putting the fish in. Now although there is loads of different species of bacteria that actually do live in your tank and in your filter and your gravel in the water, I'm going to keep this quite simple and split them into two different types. Aerobic bacteria, which need a highly oxygenated environment, and anaerobic bacteria, which need anaerobic conditions, which is basically an environment where there's very, very little oxygen. Most people will be familiar with the aerobic bacteria because they inhabit most filters. Anaerobic bacteria are actually very difficult to get in your filter, but there is ways you can do it. Now the aerobic bacteria sets up in the filter reasonably quickly. It'll set up quicker on ceramic and sintered glass media than it will on plastic media, which might take up to six months. It loves the oxygen-rich environment that a filter generally provides, and most filter media is set up to create a good home for aerobic bacteria. It's your aerobic bacteria that'll eat the ammonia and convert that into nitrite and then eat the nitrite and convert that to nitrate. So in most filtration situations, whether it's in a tank or in a pond, you've got a lot of aerobic bacteria, a lot of aerobic activity. You're pushing as much water through the filter as possible really feeding that bacteria hard, it's colonizing the media, it's consuming all the ammonia and nitrite, but it's producing nitrate. 
Now this is a particular problem with, say, the likes of Nexus filters in ponds. They've got a plastic media which moves. It's called a moving bed filter. And that is really a highly aerated environment because you've got an air ring around the outside of the filter making all this media move. It's hellish well oxygenated and the media is very simple. This is one of the best ones you can get for a moving bed filter and that one is called Helex. See it's got a reasonable surface area as far as plastic media goes but it really only supports aerobic bacteria. Now after about two or three years or more the internal structure of that inside those little paddles may build up enough filth to be able to support anaerobic bacteria but for the purpose of this video we may as well just say that it doesn't because two or three years in the life of a filter is a hell of a long time when you're waiting for something to set up. Now your anaerobic bacteria really does need a different sort of media and in an aquarium filter that's the sort of thing that you tend to get. It's a ceramic ring. This one's actually a very good quality one. See the hole through it there. See how rough it is? It's nice and porous. So the water's going to get right inside that and therefore the bacteria is going to get right inside that as well. If you've got a pond filter you're probably familiar with this sort of stuff. This is Alpha Grog. It's a much larger media than what you would have indoors. And this, again, has a big surface area. The porosity of this is only about 26% though, which compared to the media I'm just about to show you, is very low. A lot of people watching this video probably won't recognize this, but this is sintered glass. This is actually different to ceramic because this is made of sand, two different sizes of sand, and a binding agent and a few more secret ingredients. It's pushed through an extruder and then put into a kiln. This is extremely porous, over 40%. So it's way more porous than your Alpha Grog. Obviously this is a little bit too big for use in most aquarium filters. Unless you have a sump, which would be underneath your tank, or an overhead shower filter. On the subject of shower filters, this is absolutely perfect for koi shower filters. And the reason sintered glass in particular is so good is because, see that particular design, it hasn't got a hole in the middle. So the water doesn't just shoot straight through it. The outer edges of this are colonized in the same way every other media would be, by aerobic bacteria. They're going to eat away the ammonia and nitrite, but they're going to be producing quite a lot of nitrate. Now in the central core of here, it's a little bit more dense than the outer edges and the water cannot really force its way through it quickly so you end up with a very slow flow going through the middle of this media and that's the region that will support anaerobic bacteria and your anaerobic bacteria in any sort of filter is so important because it's the anaerobic bacteria that actually eat away the nitrate reducing its level if you have very little anaerobic or no anaerobic bacteria at all, like in a moving bed, you're going to build up a lot of nitrates in your tank or in your pond. Therefore, you're going to need to do pretty large water changes, ideally every week. With the right media, which will support both types of bacteria, you don't need to do such large water changes. Now I mentioned that the aerobic bacteria sets up more or less starting from day one. On the best media, the likes of this biohome media, scented glass, it takes about two or three weeks to get up to a really good strong colony. Anaerobic bacteria takes a lot longer because it often relies on a little bit of filth building up on the outside of the media, reducing the flow down to almost nothing for the internal core of the media. So you might not notice any difference in your nitrate levels for four to six months. But after that period, you're going to see your nitrates come down and down and down and down. And from reports that I've been getting back from the newest sort of media, which is one I actually had built to my own specification, the nitrate seems to come down to about five parts per million. And it stays there, which is 
absolutely incredible. That means you don't need to change such a large amount of water. You don't need to change the water as regularly. So in an ideal situation, you would have a filter which would provide a home for aerobic bacteria and also anaerobic bacteria. That would mean that the levels of pollutants were extremely low. Ideally, ammonia nil, nitrate nil, nitrate very low, 5 to 10 parts per million. Now that's extremely hard to achieve and in fact with the likes of a, an ordinary foam filter, two blocks of foam and a pump, it's impossible to achieve because that just does not support the anaerobic bacteria necessary to eat away nitrate. Now I'm not going to go into full detail about this new sort of media that I had made for myself because I've already done a video for that. It's called Biohome Ultimate. So look on my channel, find that. It's about 20 minutes long. I basically go into everything you could possibly want to know about this media. This video is more about the nitrogen cycle. So I'm only going to very quickly show you this, but, but I will say that I've been into keeping fish for, oh man, I don't know, 20, 25 years, maybe it's more. And I actually had to get this media made because no other media could do what I wanted it to do, which was eat ammonia, eat nitrite, and eat nitrate properly. So here we go. That's it there. It's basically a smaller version of that big grey stick that I showed you before. And I had it made smaller because this fits into external filters absolutely perfectly. You've got the quite open porous structure on the outside for your aerobic bacteria. But if we look inside we see it's a slightly different colour. That's partially because of the firing process and it's also because that is a little bit more dense. And it's that slight change in density in the middle of here which allows this to support anaerobic bacteria. Now the red colour on that media is because it's got trace elements added as well. It's actually a, a really well made concoction of things all designed to provide the ultimate home for bacteria. Hence the name Biohome Ultimate. The trace elements are basically most of the things that bacteria needs to really grow well. And as far as I know, there's no other media has those in apart from the bio home. And it makes such a difference, especially in marine situations. And although I don't deal with marine fish in my shop, I'm aware of the fact that marine bacteria cultures are a lot harder to set up than freshwater ones. The biohome really does make a difference. So the perfect place for that particular type of biohome media would probably be in either a shower filter, if you're using it in a koi pond, or in a sump, if you have marine, or if you have a freshwater tank, would probably be in an external filter. And I've actually done a video of how to set up an external filter properly. 99 times out of 100 when you buy one of the manufacturer it will be set up wrong. It'll be set up in such a way that the fine muck blocks up your media and really prevents it from working efficiently. So check that video out. I'll also put that link in the video description. It's super important that you do have your filter set up properly and I'll go into that in a minute. So you can have the world's best filter with the world's best filter media in it, but if you just bang your tank full of fish before the bacteria has had a chance to set up in your filter, no matter whether it's marine, freshwater, indoor, outdoor, it's going to absolutely murder the fish because you need that bacteria in the filter to process the fish's waste. So under normal circumstances, you'd set your tank up, you'd put all your filter media in, you'd set the filter away, you'd put your heater in if it's an indoor one. You'd let it run for at least a week and then you'd start trickling fish in. You'd put maybe four or five mid-water fish in one week. You'd leave it another week, possibly two. Put a few more in. So your fish would be producing waste, which would be feeding bacteria. Put more fish in. Hopefully by then the bacteria will have populated the, the media to such an extent whereby it could cope with that waste. So a little few more fish, bacteria grows. A few more fish, bacteria grows again. 
until after a few weeks or even a few months, depending on how many fish you're putting in, you'll have a full stock of fish. Do it gradually. So you can either do it gradually, like that, which is pretty much the method I prefer, because when your fish excrete waste into the water, it's not just ammonia, it's all sorts in there as well. You also excrete good bacteria, so even if you've got the, a really excellent source of good bacteria, your fish waste is probably the best one you can get because you know that's living, it's come through the fish, it's actually feeding. So you can do it that way or you can do what's called a fishless cycle. You can basically buy ammonia or put food in. That'll produce the waste necessary for your bacteria. Depending on how well the cycle goes, it might take four weeks, depending on the media, or it might take four months. You just can't tell. You've got to monitor the levels of pollutants, i.e. ammonia and nitrite, and also nitrate to a lesser extent. So what will happen is, in the first few weeks of your tank's life, when you put fish in, the ammonia will go up, the bacteria will colonize your filter and eat away that ammonia, bringing the level down, but as it brings it down, it will be converted to nitrite, so the levels of nitrite will go up as your ammonia is coming down. Then you'll have more bacteria eating away the nitrite. And as it eats away the nitrite, your nitrate levels come up. And in normal circumstances, those nitrate levels will continue to rise and they'll probably level out at a pretty high level, which will mean that you need to do water changes every week. If you have media in your filter that will support anaerobic bacteria, they'll get to work eating away that nitrate and they'll actually reduce the level and that's something that just doesn't happen in normal filters and when the anaerobic bacteria gets set up and starts actually reducing that nitrate down to a lower level a lot of people can't believe it because it's the sort of thing that you just don't see in filtration it's the full nitrogen cycle so whilst most filtration will only do two-thirds of that nitrogen cycle a properly set up filter should do the whole thing should convert ammonia to nitrite, to nitrate, and the nitrate should be eaten away by the anaerobic bacteria. There are ways that you can set up the filter even quicker, and they involve adding some sort of bacteria. Now, most bacteria comes in liquid form, it's generally in a bottle. You squeeze it in, it might have been in that bottle for 18 months, 2 years, chances are it's pretty much dead you might get two or three bits of bacteria, which, to be fair, is enough because it will, from itself, repopulate the filter. And each ball contains billions of bacteria. The ball actually feeds the bacteria. So over time, these do reduce in size. They've got about an 18 month shelf life. And when you put these into your filter, they'll slowly dissolve and they will seed the filter with bacteria. You're not just dumping a load in in one go and hoping for the best. This is seeding the filter 24-7. Now these were actually designed for use in moving bed filters because the plastic used in the moving bed filters as the media is super difficult to set up with bacteria. It takes months. And by adding these, every time these bump into a bit of plastic, they knock a little bit of bacteria onto the plastic. So they do make a difference. And when these are added to ordinary filter media, in an ordinary filter, i.e. a sump, overhead filter, shower filter, or external filter, these slowly dissolve and they release bacteria 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, for about 2 or 3 weeks. They make a hell of a difference. And if you wanted a power cycle your tank, say you suddenly found you had too many fish in there, or you've, one of your kids has dumped a load of food in, chuck a load of these in, they will really annihilate the ammonia and nitrite making the water safe very quickly. So as I've mentioned in a normal filter the best possible media you can put in is BioHome. I'm not going to bang on about it. I do sell that stuff. I have had it made to my specifications because I'm so passionate about filtration. If you want to buy it there's a link to my eBay shop in the description in the video description and there's also a US supplier as well now called Great Wave Engineering. Their link is also in here. I will add more links 
because I'm hoping to get a supplier in Australia. There's people crying out for a supplier in Australia because the shipping from England to Australia costs a fortune. If we could get somebody out there as a distributor, ultimately it would cost the end user less. So I'm hoping somebody over there will take this media as well. Although Biohome's been out for long enough, 12, 15 years, these really specific forms of Biohome media that are designed for use in your external filters, in your shower filters, in small situations with the added trace elements have only been out for six months to a year. So they're only just starting to show up on forums. From what I've seen, 100% of the reports have been positive. Everybody's raving about it and people who've used it for six months and longer are starting to report that the nitrates are coming down. Which to them is freakish, but it's exactly what I wanted from this media. Exactly what I wanted and I've got it. Because I've got it, you can have it. Now whether you've got a 1500 quid massive koi filter or whether you've got a small external filter indoors a filter is basically a two-stage thing it could be a three-stage thing if you have chemical filtration but but for the purposes of this video I just want to say you don't really need that if you filter set up properly with the right stuff in you don't need all these sachets and all this crap to put in it's really unnecessary it's a two-stage thing at heart. First stage, mechanical filtration. This is your foams or pads or whatever. The water always wants to go through them. Coarse, medium, fine. So it filters out coarse, medium, fine muck. Then the water travels to your media. Your media is taking clean water, so it's not getting clogged up. And that allows it to process the waste that's within that water without getting clogged up without all those little pores that would otherwise support bacteria getting filled with muck and that means that your filter is going to be so efficient so your first stage is your mechanical basically filtering all the muck out of the water and that's really the only side that you should need to maintain regularly and you just do it as and when when the foams are mucky you need to clean it in the case of an external filter when you notice the flow the return flow slowing down a bit that's an indication that your foams need cleaning. You take the media out, get to your foams, clean them, put it back together, and it's away again. The second stage is your biological. And that's the stage where your aerobic and anaerobic bacteria are doing their job. Obviously, anaerobic bacteria are sometimes very limited by using crappy media. But in a perfect situation, you would have aerobic and anaerobic bacteria all work and within that biological zone to eat ammonia, nitrite and nitrate basically converting their waste into good water simple as that it's a really simple process and it's a natural process so I've probably rambled on a little bit too much I'm sure I've shot about 40 minutes worth of footage here which I'm going to try and edit down as far as I can but the nitrogen cycle and what happens in your biological zone really is a simple process. It probably sounds complicated. I've tried to make it as simple as possible. It's basically all about providing surface area for bacteria. Yes, carbon has a ridiculous surface area. Billions of tiny little passageways. But the reason that you need to replace that regularly is because those tiny little passageways become blocked very quickly. So as a biological media, carbon is no good at all. You need something that's specifically designed for the job and it's going to last a hell of a long time. It's going to support that bacteria for years and years and years and that bacteria is going to sort out the nitrogen cycle. Thanks for watching. I don't think I can say any more about that. <laughs>